Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Stefan Pradhan. I'm a software engineer at WeWorks. And I'm very happy today to talk to you about um, Flagger and progressive delivery. We started Flagger two years ago as a way to decouple uh, deployment from the from release and enable automatic rollbacks uh, and make the release process safer um, to automize. Let's see what transformations you need to do to your uh, CI/CD pipelines in order to move from a classical uh, um, way of deploying things to uh, something that enables progressive delivery and how we can apply these uh, techniques. So I draw a di diagram here how CI/CD looks like in general. Um, you have your app repo where your source code is. Uh, in there, you also have a Docker file, Kubernetes manifests, scripts that or YAMLs that define how your uh, CI/CD process uh, goes. So you push a change to your app repo that creates a container image. Uh, then your uh, script will uh, place the new image tag inside the uh, Kubernetes manifest and apply those manifests on the cluster. And this is how you um, release a new version of the app. There are a couple of challenges with this approach. If you have multiple apps that share some infrastructure item, let's say an ingress controller or the same namespace and so on, where do you place those shared um, items? Um, if you place them uh, in all your app repos and you modify something in one repo, then when you run uh, these pipelines in parallel, they'll be fighting each other, right? They'll be undoing each other's uh, changes. There is another challenge is around rollback. If you want to um, restore your app to a previous version, you have to rerun the whole pipeline. That means creating a new container registry, deploying that on production. And that's not actually rollback because you create a new artifact and whatever is in there could be different. And I listed here more things uh, around CI/CD as a monolith. Um, one, one aspect is around configuration drift. If all these manifests are all over the place in all your app repos, how do you ensure that your production system can be versioned? How do you detect when your production system changed somehow? Let's say someone edits something directly on the cluster. How do you make sure that uh, those changes are being ported back to Git? What happens to them when you run a new pipeline? Some of them could be overwritten and so on. So in order to, to make the production releases more um, stable, more um, traceable, we can break CI from CD. And how CI would look like, it's, it's going to be the thing that runs your end-to-end -end tests, um, maybe with a Kubernetes kind cluster that you can run inside your CI system. Uh, if, if everything goes okay, you can also validate uh, your Kubernetes manifest with something like OPA conf test. In the end, you'll be creating an Im immutable container image and you push that to the registry and that's where your CI platform role ends. It doesn't know about your production clusters. It doesn't connect to, uh, to Kubernetes uh, that way. Now, for the continuous delivery part, the proposal is you'll be using GitOps. So what GitOps means is you will have this repository where you define your whole fleet state. The continuous delivery controllers will not be running outside the cluster, will be running on each cluster. And this is how the clusters themselves will reconcile their own state. They will connect to your fleet repository. They will take, uh, let's say, a customized overlay made 
for that particular cluster or that particular group of clusters, let's say you have a staging group and a production group and so on. And they will be continuously reconciling their own state with what's defining it. That means you can version your infrastructure along with your app deployments. And um, if you want to roll back to a particular point in time, you will have uh, matching definitions for, for all these things. What challenges are with, with this continuous delivery approach with GitOps? One of the issues is how, what are you going to do if an app misbehaves after you deploy it? If, if the app crashes, let's say during deployment, the Kubernetes rolling update will uh, halt. Uh, you can add health checks to your uh, CD system and you can know about it. But what if your app rolls out nicely? Then when um, production traffic uh, ends up on the new version, your version starts to error out with 500 errors, or um, maybe the code changes add a lot of latency, so people get timeouts, or the app will be very uh, hard to, uh, to interact with. Also, there are things like, can you run multiple versions at the same time and do tests between them and so on? So in order to to make such things uh, easier to describe, we can break deployment from the release process. We use the continuous delivery tool to create deployments inside the cluster, but instead of letting Kubernetes roll out that deployment to everyone, we have a new thing that sits at the end of the pipeline and drives the release process differently from what Kubernetes is usually doing. And here is where Flagger comes into place. So you have your cluster repo, you have your deployments there, and you also have a canary object, a custom resource definition that Flagger understands where you define the policy of how you want the release process uh, to happen inside the cluster. So when you change something in your, in your cluster state, let's say you uh, bump the version of a application, Flux or another uh, GitOps operator, there are many out there, will apply that change. But instead of uh, letting that change end up directly uh, in your um, node balancer, so your users uh, will end up on the new version, Flagger will take over from there and will route traffic, a uh, small portion of your traffic towards the new version will keep increasing that uh, traffic weight. It will measure metrics from Prometheus, Datadog, CloudWatch, and others. And based on, on those metrics, it will take the decision, is the new version fit to serve production traffic or not? So as I said, Flagger is a Kubernetes operator. Uh, you deploy it on your cluster. It has this declarative model uh, through a custom resource definition. So it can create uh, policies uh, inside your Git repo, how you want the, uh, the release to happen. And Flagger um, uses a traffic management solution to, to route uh, traffic between, between versions. And Flagger works with a, a couple of service mesh implementations, Istio, Linkerd, AppMesh, and because Flagger works nicely with uh, the service mesh interface, um, things like open service mesh or uh, contour or um, um, HashiCorp um, console connect could be, um, could be working with Flagger in the future. Now, maybe you don't, you are not ready to use a service mesh or um, you just want to do progressive delivery um, with ingress controllers. For that, Flagger uh, works with uh, Contour, with Glue, with Nginx, and, and Skipper. And you can combine, for example, uh, um, Linkerd doesn't come with an ingress solution. So you can combine one of those ingress controllers with Linkerd and do both uh, 
uh, canary releases for your front-end apps and back-end apps as well. Now, in terms of deployment strategies, Flagger implements a couple of different things. Um, the first one, canary release with progressive traffic shifting works great for apps that expose HTTP or gRPC APIs, stateful apps, microservices, etc. Now, for front-end apps that have um, let's say an API, but also a static content like uh, JavaScript, CSS, HTML, and so on. When you are, when you are doing the canary release, you want to, to pin users to a particular version. And how can you do that with session affinity? And Flagger lets you um, segment your users based on HTTP headers or cookies. So you can say, uh, all the users that have this particular cookie, only those will be used to test the new version. Uh, other strategies are uh, blue-green with traffic mirroring. This works with uh, Istio. Well, this kind of strategy works great with idempotent APIs. So if your API is doing any kind of change, writes to a database or does uh, 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 changes some state, uh, traffic mirroring is, is not the way to do it because you'll be duplicating all these actions. But if you have, um, let's say, um, machine learning workloads or caching system or things that are, uh, you know, building reports or any kind of get query, uh, traffic mirroring works great for that. And finally, blue-green, the classical blue-green where um, Flagger will run your end-to-end -end tests load tests, looks at the metrics, and based on that result, it does the switch from one version to another in a single go. And I have here um, some graphical representation of how everything works. The idea is Flagger monitors the, the deployment that gets applied on the cluster. When it detects a new change, it scales out the deployment, starts to route traffic towards it, these metrics, and at the end, if everything goes okay, it lets Kubernetes do the full rollout uh, inside the cluster. And for A-B testing, it uses, instead of gradually shifting traffic, it uses a, a, a certain segment based on headers. And for blue-green, it, it runs tests, then it does uh, the final switch. Okay, demo time. So I'm going to use Flux version two to set up my cluster. I'm going to use Flagger for progressive delivery and I'm going to use Contour for uh, doing A-B testing for front-end apps and Linkerd for doing uh, um, canary releases inside the cluster for backend apps. Okay, so I have a, an empty cluster here. Okay, I have a Git repo on GitHub where I'm defining the state of my cluster. We have uh, the infrastructure items like Linkerd, Flagger, Contour. And I'm, I'm also uh, defining two workloads, a front-end and a back-end app. So first, I'm going to install Flux. So Flux version 2 is composed of several um, controllers. We have a controller that uh, deals with sources like uh, Git repositories or Helm repositories or S3 buckets. And we also have specialized reconcilers like Helm controller that knows how to uh, install a Helm release, uh, run the tests, upgrade, rollback, and so on. And we have customized controller which uh, applies customized overlays on your cluster and so on. Okay, so I have Flux installed. Now I want to um, add this repo to my cluster. So what I've told Flux now is connect to the uh, to my uh, GitHub repository 
pull the uh, pull all the manifests from there and make them available inside the cluster. Now I'm going to tell Flux how to reconcile um, the infrastructure items. So first time uh, defining the the linkerd customization inside. Uh, the infrastructure linkerd directory, there is a Helm repository and a Helm release. The Helm repository points to the official uh, linkerd uh, repo where, where their charts are, and the Helm release configures how I want linkerd to be installed on my cluster. And here I'm also telling Flux, after you apply all things, make sure that uh, the linkerd proxy injector is up and running. And I'm going to use this information to define how, uh, how the cluster uh, reconciliation should work. So Linkerd as a service mesh needs to inject um, a proxy sidecar in each pod. So I need to make sure that when I'm reconciling anything else inside my cluster, Linkerd the injector is up and running so I get a valid state of my workload. Yeah, install Linkerd. Now I'm going to configure Flagger. And I'm telling Flux, hey, Flagger depends on Linkerd. And finally, I'm going to tell Flux to reconcile Contour as well. So before this is okay, let me run Contour here and I'm going to show you here in the infrastructure how I've configured Contour. So I want Contour to be part of my service mesh. And in order to do that, I've uh, defined a customized patch for Contour. So I'm, I'm pulling the uh, Contour manifest from the Contour uh, repo. But then I'm telling Flux, hey, take all this configuration and apply this customized patch to it. Uh, Contour comes with a daemon set for, for the Envoy's um, uh, reverse proxy. And I'm adding here an annotation to tell Linkerd inject from the uh, project Contour na namespace, inject your sidecar only in the Envoy uh, pods. Okay, so I have everything running now. If I'm, I'm going to look now at flagger logs Seeing that Flagger has started, it has connected to the Linkerd Prometheus. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to tell Flux to uh, deploy the workloads I have provisioned in my repo. I'm applying the workloads. And Flagger will, will start uh, monitoring uh, the, the deployments because in my workload definition, I also have uh, canary uh, custom resources. And based on, on that custom resource, Flagger will bootstrap both application for us. So if we look at what's happening in the front end namespace, I see there are things happening. So this is my deployment that I have, I have defined in my git repo, pod info in the front end namespace. But I also have a canary definition for, for pod info that tells Flagger how to configure the, uh, the whole thing. What Flagger does, it says, okay, I have this deployment running. Uh, I'm going to take over the uh, reconciliation for it and I'm going to create a clone out of that deployment. And the clone is named minus primary. After the clone is up and running, Flagger will scale to zero the deployment that Flux applied. All your uh, production traffic from this moment on goes to pod info primary. So now if I'm looking again at the pods, seeing that whatever was in Git, it's, it's gone, it's scaled to zero and uh, these primary pods are, are running. Flagger also creates um, Kubernetes services and um, contour uh, ingress objects. And for, for Kubernetes services creates three services. One is the Apex service, the canary and the primary, and these services will be used for traffic switching. So in your Git repo, you are only defining uh, your deployment and an horizontal pod autoscaler and Flagger will, will create all the other objects for you. 
Now I'm going to port forward to the Envoy um, ingress controller and see if my app is running. Yeah, so I have version 5.0.0 bootstrap deployed in my cluster. Now, let's say I want to do a release and how I'm going to do that, I'm going into the repo and I'm going to bump the version number. So workloads, front end, and I have here uh, the definition of where pod info deployments and horizontal pod autoscaler come from. It comes from uh, the app repo itself. For uh, and I'm I've told Flux to pick a particular uh, tag. Now I can tell Flux to monitor the container registry and do the patching on its own and bump the the version every time I'm I'm pushing something to the registry or I can do it manually. So. I'm going in here and I'm saying, hey, I want to uh, deploy 501. I'm going to commit this change. And if I'm go doing watch flux get customizations, what is going to happen is source controller part of flux will detect there is a new change in the repo will pull that change inside the cluster, then the specialized controllers like customized controllers say, hey, I have a new, a new revision. I'm going to apply that uh, um, inside. Okay. The new revision has been detected and now Flux applies that change in the order that I have specified. So it takes into account dependencies. First, it applies Linkerd, uh, then it applies uh, my workload. And the workload has, has been applied. It has moved to the new revision. And if we look at what Flagger uh, is doing, Flagger is saying, hey, I have detected a new version. So I need to test it out according to the policy that I have in, in my Git repo. And if we look here, we see that we end up on 501. And this is Firefox. Let's see what happens if I'm going to visit the same URL using Chrome. On Chrome, I'm on 500. Why is that? In my release definition, Here I have, so this is a canary definition for Flagger and where I told Flagger, hey, test the new version only on users that have a header that contains Firefox in the user agent. So I'm segmenting my user based on something from the user agent header and I'm using those users uh, to test my new version. So here I'm still on, on zero, zero, and this is where the test is running right now. What Flagger does, every 10 seconds, it reads metrics, checks that my SLOs, my uh, um, conditions are, are fine. I've made conditions like 99% uh, uh, of all requests must succeed the latency of my new app has to be under 500 milliseconds and so on. So it checks all, this, uh, uh, all these SLOs that I've defined. And once the, uh, the iterations are over, I've set up 10 iterations, it should fully uh, promote the new version to all uh, users. And how it does that, the moment the, the analysis is over, it tells Kubernetes, hey, now do the rolling upgrade of the primary deployment with, with what's uh, declared in Git. And he's doing that right now. Flagger also waits for horizontal pod autoscaler to, uh, to scale up or down the workload. So it pauses the, the analysis while uh, HPA is running. 
it waits for uh, for the all pods to terminate, and then it will uh, finalize the, the release. So if I'm going back here to my uh, um, Chrome, I see that now both uh, both uh, variant of of users are on the same uh, on the same version, and this is how I, I've done a, an A/B test. Okay. Now let's see how uh, how progressive a uh, progressive tra traffic shifting happens. So I have here in workloads the backend definition. It's still pod info. It's the same app, but in the in the canary definition, I've uh, I've changed things a little. There is no longer a header matching uh, condition. Now I'm configure I'm configuring Flagger to uh, shift traffic weight from one version to another, and I'm I'm telling Flagger to start with five percent, go up to fifty percent while measuring metrics and so on, and if everything goes uh, according to plan, then do the final uh, rollout. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to tell Flux to update the, the backend uh, app. And instead of uh, specifying here a fixed version, a fixed git tag, I'm going to tell Flux to uh, I'm going to tell Flux to look to take into account a Semver uh, expression, find the latest release for that Semver expression and deploy that uh, in my cluster. So I'm doing here somewhere, the expression is greater than five zero. Commit this change. And now if I'm looking at my backend, Seeing that Flagger has detected uh, the new version and it will uh, start to, uh, to roll out traffic towards it. Let's pour forward to the Linkerd dashboard. We don't need this anymore. Okay, let's look at Linkerd. So Linkerd can show how traffic splitting is uh, happening inside the cluster. So if I look here for the info, I see that Likert is reporting that the primary now is on 95% and the canary uh, is on 5%. Now let's say there is something going wrong with the canary. How can I simulate errors? I'm going to um, exec into a pod. I'm going to generate 500 errors for my canary workload. Uh, what Flagger is doing, it keeps increasing the weight and measures uh, latency and error rate. Now, while I'm generating errors, Flagger has detected that, okay, the success rate should be 99% and it now got to 97%. And the success rate keeps dropping what is going to happen, I've set a threshold for Flagger. It fails more than uh, three times, roll it back. And what Flagger is doing right now, it has determined that uh, the release conditions are not met. It, it routes all the traffic back to the primary deployment and scales down uh, the experiment, the canary. So if we look back here, we see that the primary pods are still running the same as those one. And my experiment has failed and it's gone. If I'm doing get pod, this one, looking at the image, I, stay, I see that it's still on 500. So this is how you can set um, 
uh, service level objectives with, with Flagger based on the metrics that the service mesh or ingress controllers offers. Now, maybe you want to do more than that. I mean, okay, it's, it's okay to look at errors and latency, but in your release process, you may want to include custom metrics like, um, I don't know, whatever, um, how many connections are open to a database, how many people are clicking on a button in an A-B test and so on. How you can do that, you can instrument your apps with, uh, let's say, a Prometheus, or you push the metrics to Datadog, um, CloudWatch, New Relic, and so on. And Flagger uh, allows you to uh, declare uh, service level objectives targeting these uh, metric providers. So Flagger will run a queries on Datadog, let's say, take those metrics from there, and you can set a threshold for, for each one. This was a demo, going back to the presentation. So if you are interested in how Flagger works, there is a docs website with details on how um, you can configure it to work with any kind of service mesh or ingress controller, how you can ingress controllers, how you can define uh, metric providers, how you can configure Flagger to uh, issue Kubernetes events for everything that's happening or post to Slack, Microsoft Teams, Rocket, and other um, chat platforms. So you uh, know when Flagger did the rollback, when it starts and so on. Uh, Flagger also has capabilities like uh, a manual gating. For example, you can configure Flagger before it starts uh, canary release um, to ask permission. So it will call on webhook and say, hey, I want to start this uh, canary list. Am I allowed to do that? And you can also have manual gates for the final promotion. So it, it does the release, but it, uh, it does the analysis, but it doesn't do the final release until someone tells it to do it and so on. Um, please check out the, um, the repos here. Uh, so it's a demo repo with Linkerd and Contour, what I demo today. And there is also one for, uh, for Istio and it uses both Flagger and Flux to drive the whole thing from a GitOps perspective. Now, everything that I've shown is with GitOps uh, and is using, Flag is using Flux, but you can use Flagger uh, with any kind of continuous delivery tool, even if you do the whole thing from CI because Flagger can be configured and controlled through, uh, through a custom resource. And if you apply that from Jenkins or whatever you are using, it will still do the same thing. Uh, thank you very much. And please try out Flagger. Let me know how it goes. Have a nice day.